showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, you two? Capital G here, back after a few days off, and I guess I just got swept away by the NBA playoffs. For those of you guys who don't know, I am a huge sports buff, even though some of you guys might not be, and I am a absolute diehard Washington Wizards fan. It has been so long since my team has been relevant. Like, all we used to be on is, you know, the not top 10 and shacking a fool and stuff like that, and the Wizards are actually good now. We might actually win a playoff series. Like, I can't remember the last time we won a playoff series. I think it was like the Guild with arenas years anyways um i'm a huge fan of the nba so i've just been like completely caught up in that and i was kind of wondering what was going to finally drag me away from watching one piece so much and i think that this is it anyways what you guys are looking at is a, a new otk burn deck that's going to be playable in the tcg fairly soon uh, one of the cards in here supply unit is obviously a promo and the ocg structure deck and then you have arch fiend eater that's going to be released in duelist advent which is I mean, that's pretty much just around the corner. So, anyways, let me just introduce you to this deck because, you know, it's kind of a fun, um, casual deck. It can be, <laughs> it's really funny when it goes off because it uses, like, the most obscure cards that you could ever imagine. And it's really just an interesting deck. I'm wondering maybe if it might see a little bit of competitive play. If, the, if it worked on turn one, like, this would see a competitive play. I guarantee that. Anyways... For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with this card, and I might do a discussion on it if you guys are interested. This is Archfiend Eater. It's coming out in Duelist Advent. It says you can only control one Archfiend Eater. If you control a spellcaster type monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. During your opponent's end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one face off monster you control. Destroy that monster, and if you do, special summon this card from your graveyard. So the second part of Archfiend Eater is really the important part of the card effect. The fact that it can basically summon itself from the graveyard as long as you pop one of your monsters. And we know that there's a bunch of different monsters out there that float, you know, shit like Dandelion, or you can use it to trigger um, effects from, like, Fire Kings and stuff like that. Uh, the fact that it works only during your opponent's end phase is a little tricky because it means that you have to have something on the field to actually live, but it's still good nonetheless that it uh, summons itself from the graveyard, and the cost isn't really much at all. You're probably never going to special summon this card from your hand because I really couldn't see you playing this in any spellcaster type deck. And then the second part of this deck that's really important is Mana Core of Darkness. This is a card that it used to have like a really strong loop way back in the day with um card to safe return, and then they ended up like semi limiting this. Basically, if it's sent to the graveyard during that turn, you can send either a beast, a beast warrior, or a winged beast to the graveyard and you get the special summon this so you know way back in the day you could just you know you could just keep special summoning them by discarding other monsters and then you know if card is safe for turn it's like you just keep drawing 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 so these two essentially make up two of the three cards that you'll need in the loop and then you just play other complementary cards that are for the most part beast warrior you play tengu because it's a beast warrior that also helps you go into rank four exceeds you know giant rat is a beast and that pulls archfiend eater straight from the deck you have a uh, dust knight which um dumps this guy archfiend eater into the graveyard because you want archfiend eater into the graveyard so that you can trigger its effect and go to the otk you play a couple of copies of kage de kage um that essentially means that if you summon a giant rat or a dust knight that you can um special summon this guy and then you can go into lavable chain you know what i mean um that basically just either dumps like mana core or it can dump uh archfiend eater into the graveyard just like whatever really you need monk again sets up for the lavable chain uh plays and then you play um the cat of the omen and the third piece of the otk that you will need is backfire and with backfire basically you just keep sending mana core and each time you send mana core to the graveyard you do 500 damage and then you play you know draw cards shit like um upstart goblin pot of duality because for the most part you won't special summon a lot during your turn unless you're using monk or kage de kage everything else you know rat whatever you can uh you know archfiend either you do special summoning on your opponent's turn pot of dichotomy oddly enough works in this deck and it's because you have so many different types you know uh dust knight is a warrior kage de kage is a reptile monk is a spellcaster and then everything else is either beast warrior 
or beast and it's pretty much like a 50 percent breakdown and then when you get to the exceeds like lavabo chain you're talking about you know what is that he's either a dragon or a fiend so it's like you have so many different types that you can easily trigger that and then you just have you know your other like sort of semi staples mst for like backer removal get rid of like bottomless trapple shit that would essentially crack your locks and then just more draw power reckless greed you know cards like supply unit this deck has mad draw power upstart reckless greed supply unit pot of a uh, uh, pot of dichotomy and pot of um, duality and the thing about uh, supply unit in this deck is it works really well because you know there'll be tons of times where you'll set monsters so it's like if your opponent attacks a face down monster you can trigger dust knight you can trigger omen plus you get the draw card so you're getting where you need to be plus your drawing cards and you can actually trigger your supply unit by using archfiend eater or by using giant rat you can just ram into your opponent's monster get archfiend eater draw a card and then the last part of the um, the OTK is backfire um, backfire basically says when a fire monster goes to the graveyard you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent and you it's not once per turn which is obviously why it is an OTK alright so here's how the OTK play works basically during your opponent's end phase all you need on field is mana core of darkness and you need backfire um, you don't ha you don't actually have to have mana core live you know, as long as your opponent doesn't 101 it, which is the worst possible thing that can happen. If your opponent just attacks over it, you really don't care because essentially all you're going to do is dump a Tengu or a Rad or an Omen or something like that or another copy of Mana Core to just Monster Reborn itself. And then you want this in the graveyard. So essentially, this will be face up. Uh, Archfiend Eater will pop the Mana Core of Darkness, which will send it to the graveyard. Backfire will trigger, you will inflict 500 damage. And then Mana Core will essentially kick in. Mana Core will kick in, and then you can send Archfiend Eater to the graveyard to summon Mana Core, and then you just resummon the uh, Archfiend Eater off the Mana Core, and then you just repeat that loop over and over again. So you do the loop 16 times, that's 8,000 damage. You might need to do it a couple more times if you play like Upstart during the duel. It really doesn't matter because this is 100% an infinite loop. You can do 8,000, you can do 50,000 if you feel like doing that. It really doesn't matter. Your opponent is going to lose either way if they can't get rid of either one of these two monsters or backfire from being played. Um, it's interesting with Mana Core of Darkness. Like way back in the day, as I said earlier, the card had loops with card to save for turn. And now that Archfiend Eater has been released, it looks like it has another loop. So let me know what you guys think of this. It's just, <laughs> it's a really, really silly deck. I'm not saying that this is the most optimal build, but you guys get the concept. Maybe we could throw in some Call of the Haunted or something like that to get Mana Core. Uh, during get mana core on board during your opponent's end phase more consistently. I'm just you know it's a little tight for space. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always. Subscribing makes life happy.